on guys, it's K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a great day today. Bitcoin is down over 38% on the day we are dumping as we speak. Oh wait, never mind guys, these are just the oil prices. Yes, it could be a lot worse. You could be invested in oil right now, but actually Bitcoin has had a little bit of a red day. You can see we did push downwards, trying to push below the $6,900 level this morning. Currently, we did actually have a nice bounce back. We did, in fact, close the CME futures gap that we talked about yesterday. So we're gonna get into all that today. We're gonna talk about what to expect. We do have a big move potentially on the horizon. You can see Bitcoin is coming to the end of this triangle. We're having a perfect apex of the resistance and the support. So I do expect there to be something pretty big for Bitcoin within the next 24 to 48 hours. This could be the move we've all been waiting for. I want to discuss how Bitcoin could still possibly go to $100,000 in the next two years. Maybe we got a little bit of a setback with the uh, you know virus, which shall not be named. But I do want to talk about one particular Bitcoin signal that we only really see every quarter or less. And if this this does flip, which it could flip soon, man, it could signal the buy opportunity at least for the next three months or so. And I also want to go into this really strange sort of fundamental analysis that's acting as a resistance. This is really weird. We're going to get into all that today. If that sounds good to you, you know what to do. Oh, and I'm also going to show you how most likely, more than likely, the bottom is in. If that sounds good, thank you so much. Also, we are giving away a Ledger Nano S at the end of the video. And without further ado, let's dive directly in. So yesterday's video, we were talking about closing this CME futures gap. It was right here at around the $7,080 level. Actually, as I was making the video yesterday, it looked like we were trying to push down. Well, we can get rid of that. We absolutely closed that gap. So Nice way to start the week off, right? We don't have to worry about any gaps. Now, having a look over here, you do notice that we have sort of fallen below our yellow support. It is currently now acting as resistance. However, we have maintained above the previous resistance as support. So currently, Bitcoin is in sort of a no man's land, but we are getting very close to the end of this apex where we've had this resistance that's been holding us down pretty much since the peak around February 13th. And right here, when we bottomed, we have had a point where we're meeting. Now, I do want to point out that we are in fact up above the 50 day moving average. So this could be good, uh, you know, short term. However, pointing out this really strange resistance before we get back to the charts. So this was pointed out by Byzantine General, and this is the average minor cash flow, uh, essentially that was supported during the entire market, even when we had the bear drop at the end of 2018. But now you could see right here, if I zoom in, it's actually acting as resistance. Now this could mean absolutely nothing at all, could mean nothing, but it really is weird and I just wanted to bring it up to you. But anyway, getting back to the charts, guys, I wanted to point out one thing. We have put in five weeks of solid green candles starting from March 16th. You can see one, two, three, four, five, and now we're actually starting to put in a red candle. Now, I just wanna point out the last time that we did this in a descending trend was back here when we started April 2nd of 2018. You could see we did one, two, three, four, five green Green candles, and then we started putting in a red candle. Now, I'm not saying that history is going to repeat itself. However, after that day, Bitcoin did have a 40% fall before we started going back to the upside again. I mean, obviously we were in a very massive bear market, but I just wanted to point that out, that that could be a possibility, not saying Bitcoin's gonna fall 40%, we're gonna go down to 4,500, but we have put in five green weeks and we are starting off on a red week. Just wanted to bring that to your attention, guys. Also, I just want to point out the fact that on this weekly, we are still being held down by the 21 exponential, and we have not been able to really solid close above the VPVR, right? Now, having a look at the bullish side, this was actually pointed out by I am Wolf over on Twitter. So this is a very interesting chart, not one that we would usually look at, but this is the $1 compared to Bitcoin chart, and this is flipped inverse, so you're actually looking at it upside down. I guess it just makes it easier to see. And he basically says that this confirms to him that more the more time that Bitcoin is on this line, the more that the bottom is in. And you could see how basically it has touched perfectly dating all the way back since mid-2013. So he's basically saying the bottom is in. I mean, could we potentially come up here and retest it? Maybe. However, it does appear, according to this chart, that the bottom is in. And I want to show you one video from Carpe Noctum, and he's basically saying the bull 
bullish Kumo breakout approaches on the daily. Now, this is a signal that only flips completely bullish or bearish about once a quarter or less historically, and it looks like it could be flipping bullish, which means an amazing opportunity to buy Bitcoin. So even if Bitcoin is sitting lower than this, by the time you're watching this video, well, that means it could only be maybe an even better opportunity to accumulate Bitcoin. But let me just turn it over and we'll watch the video and then we'll get back to it. So I wanted to quickly discuss once in a quarter, once a year biannual trade opportunity here coming up for BTC. It's really simple. It's really black and white. It's really boring. It doesn't happen very often, but when we get a bullish Kumo breakout like we did here, like we did here, like we get a bearish Kumo breakout like we did here, like we did here, here, here. These are trend setting trade opportunities that are typically a buy and hold, not investment advice, but buy and hold. Very boring, like I said, very easy. Also watching this decline in volume. I think it's gonna be chop, chop, chop until we're definitely above the cloud. So what am I watching for over the next few weeks? Cloud to flip bearish bullish Kumo twist as it's known. I'm waiting for bullish TK cross here, which is the blue and red line. You can see that's almost the case. Now you'll notice I'm using controversial settings that I've used for the past six odd years, 2030, 120, 30. This is doubled cloud. It's effectively the two day singled settings. You can argue with me all you want. I use these settings because they make me money. If they don't make you money, don't use these settings. What do I care? But overall, this is flashing buy signal opportunity for me over the next few weeks. So let me know what you guys think. Are you bullish? Are you bearish? What do you think is going to happen? Because we do, of course, have the Bitcoin having coming up in 21 days. And I do want to point out from this interview from Tech with Catalina, if you haven't checked out her channel, definitely get subscribed. I'm actually going to give this video a like. This is an interview with Anthony Pompliano. You guys probably know him by now. And he discusses why he still is bullish on Bitcoin short term. Maybe it's a little difficult to sort of say, you know, this market is very volatile, but why he still believes that a $100,000 Bitcoin is possible within the next two years. I'm going to play this clip super quick and then we're going to talk about it. So I, I don't know what's going to happen in the short term. Um, you know, I, I tend to avoid kind of any short term price predictions uh, just because this is a hyper volatile asset. And then on top of that, you've got this liquidity crisis happening in the macro environment. Um, so kind of all bets are off. Uh, but over a long period of time, um, you know, in long period in, in Bitcoin terms is like call it 18 to 20 months. Right. So kind of end of 2021, uh, I think Bitcoin will hit one hundred thousand dollars in U.S. dollar value. Um, and uh, and really the reason for that is a combination of the macro environment with the habit structure. And what I mean by that is uh, you, in the macro environment, uh, especially in the United States, you've got a zero interest rate environment. Other places in the world, you have negative interest rates. Uh, so cost of capital is very cheap. You then have a massive quantitative easing. You know, in the United States, we've announced uh, $2 trillion in stimulus. There's probably more to come. Uh, and Japan just approved an almost $1 trillion stimulus plan. There, there's many other countries around the world that are injecting liquidity into their economies. And so what ends up happening is they're devaluing their currencies. And when that occurs, people are going to seek out inflation hedge assets like gold, Bitcoin, real estate, et cetera. And so right when everyone is running to gold, Bitcoin, real estate and others, uh, Bitcoin is going to have this supply shock. 50% of the incoming daily supply will disappear. And so if you wanted the price to stay stable, you would have to see a decrease in current demand along with the decrease in incoming supply. At minimum, I don't think you're going to see that. I think you'll continue to see uh, kind of the same level of demand or more likely you're going to see an increase in demand over time. And so if you get that increase in demand, but you get a decrease in incoming supply, supply demand economics take over and you get an increase in price. And so that's where Bitcoin's volatility really comes in, where other assets, if they go up, you know, four or five percent, the equivalent in Bitcoin's term of a four or five percent increase in like public equities is like a 10 to 20% increase in Bitcoin price, right? That, that on a kind of historical relative basis. And so to me, it's, it's a thing where uh, Bitcoin has a very binary outcome. It's either worthless or it's going to be worth, you know, millions of dollars a coin um, at some point in the future. 
I tend to think that obviously we're going to head towards it being worth a lot more than it is today. And on top of that, I think that uh, after the halving, within the kind of the first 18 months of the halving, give or take, we will see a very material increase in price. My guess is that we'll see kind of $100,000 by the end of uh, December 2021 at a minimum. So regardless of whether or not you're short-term bearish or short-term bullish, you can see that the macro trend still looks very appealing to say the least. Now, here's another thing to consider. A lot of people trying to, you know, make as much money as possible. I want to buy these altcoins, right? Here's the thing. Looking at the fact that Bitcoin is currently around $7,000 and we're looking at a $100,000 Bitcoin potentially in the next two years, could be even sooner than that. That is more than a 10x. Now, that's pretty life changing. I mean, if you can even imagine holding just one Bitcoin today and one Bitcoin being $100,000, how is that not life changing money? Some people say that's not life changing money at all. That's not true. That depends on what you do with that money, okay? You could take that, break it off, you could buy multiple two family houses, you know, duplexes, and then have passive income for the rest of your life. You know, put the down payment on two or three different houses. Then obviously the tenants pay that rent and then you pay for the house. And then after, you know, the mortgage is paid off, well, that is completely passive income, but it's just what you want to do with it. That's just one possible example, but definitely for people out there that are gambling on some of these altcoins, while I do think there's potentials to make hundred X's, thousand X's, a lot of people end up buying the top and selling the bottom. Let's be honest, guys. Now, let's talk about the bearish side, right? It's not all sunshine and rainbows for Bitcoin. I do want to point out what Scott Minard, the CIO of financial services and investment firm uh, Guggenheim Investments said. He says that we need to see the other shoe drop, okay? So this is kind of bearish. He says when the markets start to see some of the data on unemployment rising, 22 million in the US alone, and economic growth in corporate earnings uh, contracting, there will be another level of panic in the market, but more and more ever evidence continues to mount that the crypto market has decisively bottomed, okay? Now, if you actually look what happened over in Crypto Traders Di a Digest, you had the BitMEX CEO, Arthur Hayes, which I know there's very polarizing views on this character. He says that a basic retest of around $3,000 could be possible. I'm not too sure that we'll go down to 3,000. I could see us maybe doing a double bottom around the 3.8K. Maybe we'll see a wick. But regardless, you do also have Chris Berninski, placeholder capital. Uh, he's part of that over there. He agreed and says if we see another sell everything movement, basically in traditional stocks, in the global markets, he says Bitcoin will not be spared and then we will see some of these $5,000, $4,000, maybe even $3,000 Bitcoin levels again. However, he does note that gold bottomed prior to stocks during the 2008 Great Recession, right? Suggesting that the same could happen this time around, but this time with gold and Bitcoin. And I actually showed you guys a chart the other day on my channel that, you know, some people are saying Bitcoin is following the stocks. Well, Bitcoin actually fell faster and first before we actually had the stocks hit the bottom. So you might even argue that maybe the stocks are following Bitcoin. Could be, but if you do believe that Bitcoin is digital gold, uh, yeah, and you can see right here, like I said, we are still sitting above the 50 moving average. So, I mean, it is gonna be a interesting few days for Bitcoin. Definitely gonna see some volatility. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you guys think. Are you bullish? Are you bearish? Are you shorting the Ponzi down to zero? Are you accumulating at these levels? Let me know what you're doing. And finally, I just wanted to end on a follow-up. Apparently, the DeForce De hacker that stole the 25 million is attempting to negotiate after allegedly leaking his identity. So apparently he forgot to use a VPN and it looks like he moved some PAX tokens over to one in inch dot exchange. I don't, I didn't, I didn't really go into this, but uh, yeah, let me know if you guys were involved in this. It says he seems to be a good programmer, but an inexperienced hacker. So did this guy actually just out himself? Did he get caught? Yikes. So interesting to see that moving forward. And of course, guys, it is Monday and we're going to give away a Ledger Nano S. So we did have six videos last week. So let's generate that. That will be video number two. So that is the Bitcoin having trend surge. We'll open this video up, copy that, come over here, and we will give away a ledger. All right, let's see how many comments we had on that video. That actually wasn't that popular of a video. 
So uh, lucky for you that did comment on that one. 268 comments, very, very low. Yeah, that, that video, I don't know, I guess people didn't really care about the Google. Tra oh my goodness, what is this? This is a scam. Wow, this is a great opportunity to show you guys. So basically these comments come up and it's like Bitcoin bulls, well hopefully blah, 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 blah. Uh, you know, hit up this guy on WhatsApp. These are all scams, these big paragraphs that get like 60 plus likes. I'm sick of trying to, rem that is really crazy that that is a winner. Okay. We'll pick another winner, but yeah, anything in the comments, stay away from them. Lots of scams sometimes down there, guys, even if they say it's from me. So uh, let's try another winner for the Ledger Nano S. All right, here we go. I'm hedged in cryptos, gold and silver. I have recently found a way to swap cryptos for pre precious metals. You did? You found a way to swap crypto for actual, pre real physical precious metals. BCL, I hope you see this because I would like to know a way to do this as well. Contact me, you are the ledger winner, but I think everyone else on the channel would really appreciate for you to let us know how you're doing this. Drop me a comment and uh, maybe I'll have that in tomorrow's video for all you guys. So thank you again for coming back to the channel. You guys rock. Do consider subscribing if you haven't. I do have a free Telegram group. You can check the links above or below. That's it for me, guys. Enjoy your start to your week. Thanks again for coming back. You guys rock. My name's K-Dub. This is Crypto Zombie. Until next time, stay crypto. And of course, peace out.